Meltdown asked me to bring a little bit of my uh, collection of a uh, series of Japanese toys called Jumbo Machinders. Uh, Americans might be familiar or recognize some of them, think they look sort of familiar. Um, in 1977, Mattel released uh, a toy line called Shogun Warriors, which were you know, a, a small subset of the original Japanese Jumbo Machinders. They brought over Geta Dragon from Geta Robo G, Great Mazinga, or Greater Mazinga, and uh, Raideen. And this is the Japanese version of Raideen, this is the original Japanese, and there are slight differences um, between the American versions of the Shogun Warriors and the original Japanese Jumbo Machinders. This bow arm was replaced by an accessory fist um, from the original Jumbo Machinder line, which was supposed to be used by Mazinga Z, the rocket punch or iron cutter fist. Um, and this is Combatra. This is a um, European release of the Jumbo Machinder Grandizer. And uh, this was a very popular uh, animated series. These all were. Um, and this was particularly popular in Europe, and that's why it was released in Europe, but not in the United States. And uh, one of the features of Grandizer is Grandizer is a robot who fits into a giant saucer. And not in the European version, but in the original Japanese uh, edition of the Jumbo Machinder, the head tilts back so that this giant toy robot can fit inside of uh, a giant toy saucer, which is called the Spacer. And uh, the Spacer is considered one of the crown jewels of the Jumbo Machinder collecting. And having a grandizer in the Spacer is just, uh, it's a, a very impressive to, you know, to be in the same room with it. It's got little caster wheels. It's sort of like a, you know, a shopping cart size toy almost. Um, this uh, one over here, this is called Space Valor. This is another European uh, version of the uh, Jumbo Machinders. This head is an original design. It's not taken from um, any Japanese uh, anime or live action show. It's sort of a you know Frankenstein creation of original parts. And uh, let me see, I believe the body is uh, partly from uh, Daimos and uh, the shoulder pads are from Battle, no, yeah, Battle Fever J um, and that a uh, sword that it uses is from a, a toy, a Jumbo Machinder, uh, called Daikengo. Um, this down here is uh, Pegasus. This is from uh, a TV show called Tekka Man. Uh, there's also a Jumbo Machinder of Tekka Man, but Tekka Man would ride on this robot Pegasus. Um, and uh, in, there's not only Jumbo Machinder toys of all these, there's also uh, die cast you know, was a, was a really popular trend in the 70s, die-cast robots. And uh, there, in the die-cast version of Pegasus, you could get Tekaman, you could get Pegasus, and you could also get Ganera. And Ganera was the enemy who would fight um, Pegasus, but there was never a jumbo machinder made of Ganera, and I took it upon myself to uh, make one of my own, probably bigger than you know, if it was an actual product. Um, but that took me a hell of a long time to make um, and is incredibly heavy. Uh, this one up here is uh, very rare. This is one of the few Jumbo Machinders. Uh, they're not called Jumbo Machinders because that is a licensed term to Popey. Um, this is by a company called Clover and this is Diosia. And this uh, toy is actually very, very rare. Um, there's not a lot of them out there. They don't pop up on Yahoo Japan that frequently. Um, there's a sort of a companion toy called Trider J7, which really fits in nicely with it. They look very good next to each other. Um, but Trider J7 is uh, you know, sort of medium rare. This one's uh, excessively rare. In this case, we're, we're talking about different categories of toys, not jumbo machinders. Um, uh, on here, you're seeing a Tetsujin 28. Um, uh, you're seeing some of the 1960s version of Tetsujin 28, but those two right there, the show uh, was reissued in 1980 again, and that's called New Tetsujin 28. Uh, Tetsujin 28 is sort of considered, you know, the starting point of the giant Japanese robot movement. Um, after that, you know, 1972, you get Mazinga Z, which really exploded in popularity and changed the world and had a worldwide impact on giant robots. Uh, Mazinga Z was shown all across the globe 
and uh, you know, copycat shows and sequel shows really dominated the 70s. In um, here you're seeing another Tetsujin 28. Uh, you're seeing uh, the Daikumaru Space Dragon from Guy King, which was 1976. Uh, in the back, you're seeing another show by Go Nagai, who was also the same creator as Mazinga Z. That's from Get a Robo G. That's the Shogun Warriors version, which was released here in 1977. And then uh, back there, you're seeing uh, Micronauts, uh, Force Commander. Um, the Micronauts were uh, brought over in, by Migo in 1976, and they are from uh, a Japanese uh, toy line called Microman. And with Microman, uh, you're dealing with a very interesting lineage of uh, Japanese toy robots. Before Microman, uh, you know, the toy company that made Microman is Takara. Takara released uh, a toy line called Henshin Cyborg, um, which was sort of like the Japanese Captain Action. And those were 12 inch uh, figures, which were, you know, made out of uh, clear plastic, you know, with different colors. And uh, they would have uh, mechanical uh, interior skeletons. And um, after Henshin Cyborg dolls, Takara scaled them down and released Microman figures, which were three and three quarters inch high, and you know were just basically smaller uh, Henshin Cyborg figures. And the the um, gimmick aspect of uh, Microman was that they were interchangeable. That was the whole selling point of the line. They had uh, five millimeter holes, and uh, you could take the parts and mix and match and put on this backpack on this vehicle here. And uh, that toy line was very popular in Japan, even though there wasn't like a big uh, animated show that it was based on. And, you know, from uh, Microman, you know, which continued through 1980, Takara introduced another toy line, uh, Diaclone, which um, the, the figures were even smaller. They were only one inch tall. And from Microman and Diaclone, you get the origins of the Transformers. In 1983, Hasbro went to the Tokyo uh, Toy Fair and was looking at different toy lines and they were looking for a transforming toy line and they took Micro Change um, from Micro Man and some of the transforming Diaclone toys and uh, decided to you know, bring them over to the US as uh, Transformers. And uh, you know the transform, you know the concept of the Transformers in the U.S. is that these are sentient robots. Um, so in the initial version of the you know the first release of Transformers, it uh, you know kids were a little bit confused, like why is there this cockpit here, you know, for the one-inch Diaclone figure that was included in the Japanese version but not included in the American version. And uh, you know Diaclone and, and Microman were sort of on their way down. You know they were waning. Um, when uh, transform, you know, when Hasbro was picking those items uh, to release in Transformers, and then they just exploded in the U.S. and uh, you know have really never stopped since.